Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is Sun surrounded by what's known as a Dyson Swarm. In today's video we're going to talk about this concept and we're going to recreate this using the Universe Sandbox. Welcome to What The Math. So what exactly is this Dyson Swarm that you just saw a few seconds ago? Well, this is actually a concept that was originally proposed back in the 60s by um, a science fiction writer slash scientist by the name of Freeman Dyson. And he said the following. He basically proposed that one day when the civilization becomes super advanced, it will be able to manipulate not just um, planetary mass, but also possibly manipulate star stuff. In this case, he actually proposed that maybe one day we'll be able to create some sort of a huge, huge, huge structure around the star, specifically around our sun, that will be able to collect all of the solar energy, thus giving humanity a huge um, potential for um, energy consumption. In other words, we'll be able to collect all of our energy needs directly from the sun by uh, creating these huge solar panels around, around it. Now, um, this particular concept was kind of, you know, dormant for a while. It was briefly mentioned in one of the Star Trek episodes. But then, very recently, a few years ago, we've actually discovered a very unusual star that's known as KIC 8462852, also known as the Tabby Star. I've talked about the star previously, and I've explained what's going on here. But basically, we discovered that this star seems to have unusual dimmings. It kind of changes in brightness um, very sporadically and unpredictably. We can't really explain it. One of the explanations is that it has a lot of comets around it that seem to orbit in very unusual ways. But the other explanation, the cooler explanation, was that it seems to have some kind of a mega structure around it. Possibly a Dyson ring, possibly a Dyson sphere, possibly a Dyson swarm, created by some kind of a super advanced civilization. That's the explanation we kind of wish to have, but we don't really know if it's true, and we might not find out for a while. Now, we're going to actually imagine that humanity reached the potential to build these structures. And today I'm going to propose a scientific sort of science fiction like scenario of how we could do it around our planet. Uh, sorry, not around our planet, but around our star, uh, the sun. We're going to go into the solar system and imagine that the year is like 3000 or something. When we are super advanced, we know how to manipulate matter, we know how, how to manipulate asteroids, and we can. Um, terraform things, we can basically create uh, a lot of things in space relatively easily. And we create this very interesting self-replicating robot or um, a mechanical apparatus that essentially goes to Mercury and starts to reproduce itself in massive amounts. So we're going to go to Mercury for two reasons. One of the reasons is, of course, because this planet is not terraformable. It's a little bit too hot and also it's a little bit too empty. The second reason is because it has a lot of a lot of iron on it, a lot of metal in, on the inside. There's also some oxygen on the inside, and we can use this, uh, we can use oxygen and metal to create a very interesting material that we've been using for thousands of years. This material is known as hematite or iron oxide, which we've used to create uh, mirrors since antiquity. These mirrors could then be used to either reflect the light or to uh, create some kind of a solar panel-like structure where we can um, use the uh, sunlight to power something else somewhere else, or absorb the sunlight or re redirect it somewhere else, possibly to Mars, uh, thus terraforming it. In other words, we can create tons of mirrors using this hematite stuff. So this would take us maybe a decade or so of robotic uh, workers working here, digging through Mercury, and essentially reducing it to nothingness. All of these uh, metal parts will also be used to create the actual ring itself, and because Mercury is relatively heavy, it's about 4.5 uh, four masses of the moon, we can actually use all of this material to create the actual sphere itself, the Dyson sphere, or at least the Dyson swarm that I'm going to be showing you in this particular video. So essentially, we're going to start reducing the mass of Mercury, we're going to um, deconstruct it, and as this happens, various robots will start launching these satellite-like structures into space, and thus create the uh, Dyson 
swarm that we're going to make right now. So let's actually start by measuring the distance to Mercury, which is about 58 million kilometers. So this is how we're going to be creating these rings. We're going to go into rings here, select about 500 particles. It doesn't matter what mass they are, but I guess total mass will be about a ton. They can be obviously heavier, but these don't have to be too, too heavy. Their only purpose is to either absorb um, light and create energy and then somehow remotely transfer that energy back to Earth, which is very, very possible. We do have technology even today for remote transfer of energy. Uh, or we can alternatively uh, use mirrors to directly reflect light to Earth or to Mars or anywhere else for that matter. Uh, we're going to change this color. Let's actually make this like a funky color because it's going to be a funky sci-fi technology. So it's going to be like maybe purple or something. Light purple, violet. There you go, something like this. And all of this will be made from um, iron. And so now we're going to change the distance here to about 58 or let's just say 57 million kilometers to about 59 million kilometers. Now we're going to pause the game and do the following. Now we're pointing at the sun. We need to actually uh, position these rings in a very specific manner. So this actually might take a while if you're doing this yourself, but this is what we're going to do. Under the orientation, I'm going to actually change all of this to zero first and then place my first ring. And there it is. It's in sort of a, maybe in, the, in a similar location to Mercury, but not exactly there. Um, Mercury is going to obviously disappear at some point. But um, we're going to now change these by a little bit. So I'm going to add five degrees and add another ring here. And so it's going to start looking like this. You can kind of see the, that I'm creating these ring-like structures here. Then 10 degrees, do, not, do it again, and you get another ring. So do this a few times, and what you'll get is this. You'll get this really, really beautiful looking sphere around the sun. So maybe let's actually reduce the speed here a little bit and begin the simulation. And look at that. It orbits really, really well. And it's going to be very, very stable for a very long time. Now, so this right here is essentially what's known as a Dyson Swarm. It's a collection of rings around the star that it would basically be individual satellites. And here, I believe we have something like 7,000 of them, so it's not that difficult to create. As a matter of fact, if we really, really tried hard, we could probably even create it right now, uh, because we, we do have th several thousand satellites uh, orbiting around our own planet Earth. Now, so this would actually be very stable. This would actually be orbiting for a very long time and would be able to collect a lot, a lot of energy from our sun. These, uh, these satellites could then either, like I said, reflect the light or redirect the light or maybe create energy and then somehow transfer it remotely back to our planet Earth. One of those remote transfer technologies, one of the ways that uh, energy can be remotely transferred is act uh, has actually been discovered 100 years ago by Nikola Tesla. He actually discovered that you can easily transfer energy uh, without any wires. And this is something that these satellites could actually do um, if we were to create them here. Now, because there is only 7,000 of them, they're actually quite far, far apart from one another. And so they wouldn't really be colliding with each other. They wouldn't even be interacting with each other because they're not uh, massive enough. And there's still a little bit of Mercury left, so we can actually either keep constructing various satellites using Mercury, um, or we can, you know, use the rest of Mercury for something else, for some other bigger project. Like, for example, an actual ring that... Uh, goes around uh, the sun where we can possibly create colonies. Now, all in all, this is not an impossible project. This is a project that could actually be initiated and finished within a decade. However, obviously, we would need a lot, a lot of uh, effort and a lot, of, a lot of focus on creating both the technology needed for this and also, of course, the actual satellites themselves. But even though creating the swarm is not that difficult, or even the ring is not that difficult, creating a Dyson sphere, in other words, the sphere that would completely cover the sun, thus capturing 100% of all energy, creating a sphere would actually be very challenging. And there's several reasons for that. One of them is that even a small gravitational disturbance would actually collapse the entire sphere entirely. But the other reason is that, well, then our sun will not actually give our other planets any starlight anymore. Even though right now, um, 
our Earth is still getting just as much starlight as it did before because these satellites don't actually cover um, that much of the actual visual space here. They, they do uh, dim the light a little bit, but not by much. And what's even better is that you can actually create layers upon layers of these uh, Dyson Swarms, but creating layers upon layers of Dyson Sphere would be kind of, you know, difficult and also uh, potentially useless, because you, it, there's no point of having another Dyson Sphere after the first one, because you wouldn't be actually capturing any more starlight. With uh, Swarm, however, every single layer will add to um, efficiency of this particular structure. And so basically here, after we use up Mercury, we can actually then move to Venus and do a similar sort of a project around Venus as well. And so here comes the first Dyson ring, and then this would become the actual swarm, um, as, as long as those robots can actually survive in this highly pressurized and super hot environment of Venus. And so that's essentially it. That's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And I wanted to show you how to create your own Dyson Swarm in Universe Sandbox and how you can actually maybe even create a Dyson Sphere if you're um, ambitious enough. And hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did enjoy it and haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button right now and potentially share this video with someone else who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. Come back tomorrow because you're going to learn something else very interesting, something you may have not known before. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, space out, and as always, bye bye. And let's finish this video by initiating a supernova. Whoa, okay, that is a lot cooler than I thought it would be. But all of my uh, objects here actually survived. Now what will happen to them if I let go? All of my spheres, all my little satellites are actually escaping the solar system. That's pretty awesome.